Hello, have you been praying for preposterous precision from Plasticity? If you were wanting this software to be more precise, then this update, Plasticity 1.4, is for you. Keep watching and I will show you why even if these features aren't something that made you bristle with excitement, that they may just be some of the most powerful tools for a faster creative workflow. Now, one of the biggest complaints about Plasticity from experienced CAD designers, or NURBS nerds as they are professionally known, is Plasticity's lack of precision tools. Now, for artists coming from poly, sculpting, and voxel-based workflows, the hard surface workflow of Plasticity is a godsend. But for some more experienced industrial designers, Plasticity's lack of precision has been something to scoff at. And rather confusingly, I might add for some of us, polygonal plebeians. It's not something that I was particularly aching for because I'm more of a let's just see if it looks good kind of artist. But as much as I hate to say it, they may have been right all along. Now, if you are like me and chasing that dragon of an artistic flow state where time does not exist, I think that some of these tools will allow you to just be creative and worry about the details later on or get to a shape that you like with less thinking and less clicks. Let's get into it. So just mucking around here, we'll make a, we'll make a wall, just taking out a uh, cube or, or, or a box, pressing C to mirror it and bringing it up here. So let's start making a shape. So if you're like me, like I said, I'm a bit of an ADHD uh, artist. I like to just start not worry about the um, numbers or anything like that or the, the size or the scale or the shape so I just like to move things around till I like where they're sitting get a circle cut that across let's make another circle okay and we're starting to get a shape Now we've got two holes in our thing. We might want to mirror it at this point. Okay. But what if we wanted to know the distance between two items? You could previously, you could probably bring out a, um, a line and then find out like that and then do your maths later on and have a big think about it. Now what you can do now is press F on your keyboard, type ME and MEA even, and you'll find the measure tool, which is control plus equals on your keyboard. Now, once we choose this, we will be able to, if we just bring this up on the Z axis, make sure that that's 90 degrees or give a give or take. Okay. And bring that out here. And then we can get it again. I've put it over here in my favorites. Okay. And we can bring this out here. So if we wanted these two circles to be equally distant from there, all we need to do is choose this one. We can grab it and pull it down. And we can see exactly that's 52.9 centimeters. Okay. And we could get this down to 52. Okay, so. And then we can mirror our object again. Okay, it's got rid of one of our measurements. And your measurements do go down here. Okay, but now we've got those roughly the same distance. Okay, another thing that we might realize is that we actually. So this is the next command. Okay. Oh, one other thing. Um, the measurements. Okay. If we make a measurement now, let's just say we wanted the uh, measurement between here and here. We just pull that out. And maybe if, I think we can even change the axis that we pull it on. Uh, don't know how to do that yet. Okay. So we'll pull that out there and um, we can actually add that measurement if we put this in a group control G and we bring this down we can actually bring that measurement below that solid so it's in that group so when we hide that group 
the measurement also gets hidden. So if you've got a largely complex shape uh, with lots of different measurements, or you can individually hide all your measurements as well. So um, if you've got lots of, lots of things going on, and I don't know, you're designing for 3D printing or something like that, and you need to be precise, um, or you need something to fit into a certain socket, this would be really helpful. Okay, I'll just get rid of that for now because I don't need it right now. Um, we'll just delete that. Okay, but when I was just ad hoc modeling before, I didn't make these circles the same size because I was just mucking around. So now what you can do is if you just press equals, okay, and then enter, you can make those the same size. So this is the dimensions tool. So you could select, um, I could make a bunch of other circles. Let's just make a whole plethora of them. And we'll just cut those out. We'll get rid of our curves. We will get rid of everything or just our curves. So let's say we wanted everything to be the same size. You just choose the last one. Now this one's a really great one for me because it means that I can just go and model and just like eyeball it. And then if I need things to be the same size later on, all I need to do is choose the last one, press equals and boom, all done. So that's actually a really, really uh, powerful little tool there. Now I haven't seen if it works with a filleted. I'm just curious as if to, it will work with a filleted. Um, equals. Yes, it works with filleted um, uh, shapes as well. So another cool thing, okay. I'm not going to cover every new feature, but another cool thing that I like is this uh, new offset vertices command. So, if like let's say we just let's just make a um, that press one to go into vertex mode, and we might just want to select a few of these, and we can now offset them, okay, like so. So you can see that we're creating new vertexes. Go back into one, we can select these and delete them, and then we can trim, trim parts out. Okay, and then you can do, um, you could get a curve like this, and just the fact that you can do this quicker now, rather than having to bevel and um, trim, um, that's cool. And then we could then join these three together, Okay, we could offset these ones by pressing O, by the way, just like you would offset anything else. Um, let's just trim these out. If it will let me. And then, um, now Nick Allen um, pointed out that using a uh, bridge curve, you get quite a nice uh, little effect there. So we can do that again on the other side. And this is just another way of building up shapes very easily without having to do too much uh, thinking, like I said at the beginning. Like, so we could just trim these out. And once again, do another bridge curve between those two. And we're getting very nice curves there. So that's pretty cool for making shapes. So you can think about all sorts of different things that you could do with that. And another thing um, is, like, let's say we get to is our tangent circle. So if we go under our circle menu, we'll hold it and find this one here, tangent circle, and just on a curve. So you could bring that out like that, and that will only hit the tangent points um, on either on on both curves. So it will only intersect where there's one tangent point, as, as, as you know. So um, that's cool. This would be cool for making like, um, I don't know, like, uh, what can we make with this? I don't know if that worked. Um, let's just use what we know to sort of, uh, 
what we've learnt to actually we can use the uh, bridge curve for that one okay so we've got these funny little shape here let's join these together um, let's do what we did before and offset this okay and we're just slowly building out a shape we can trim these out um, yeah trim these out and use the bridge curve bridge curve again and we've got our funny little shape let's take our tangent circle and we can just scale it in in the middle there and let's just bring in a I don't know a sphere over here let's join uh, let's join these two to get these together and let's go into front mode GG Let's scale that up and we can shift I and I don't know maybe we can pull that in like that and just start creating like some weird character hard surface character and because we've done all of our work um, this is probably gonna start to look really weird but just I'm messing around that's a bit funky so what we could do is bring that over there and we're starting to get some quite bizarroid character going on here it looks like a bum anyway that's it from me at take refuge um, just thought I would introduce a few of the new tools to plasticity 1.4 thanks a lot for watching everybody and like and sub if you wanted to um, if you want if you liked this or if you didn't you don't have to do that at all um, it's entirely up to you what you do starting to get some Picasso like shapes just by deleting uh, things here um, and see you in the next one choose